It was Henry Ford who said, coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress, and working together is success. Hi everyone, I'm Mary Beth Garrison, your host for this edition of Inside Kern, the program that tries to demystify county programs, projects, and services. Today, we're gonna to see a collaboration of agencies, government, education, nonprofit organizations, and businesses that are trying to equip empower and employ Kern County veterans. So don't switch that dial. Stay with us as we examine Kern's innovative approach to job training for our veterans on this edition of Inside Kern. Kern County's Workforce Development Program has long been a passion of employers training resource. They seek to provide the expertise and the leadership to prepare people for the workplace, both current and future. Teresa Hitchcock, an assistant CAO for the County of Kern, is in charge of workforce development. And let me tell you, she is committed to putting people to work. Hi, Teresa. How are you? Hi. Good to see you again, Mary Beth. Nice to see you as well. So, Employers Training Resource is a department of the County of Kern. In broad strokes, tell me your mission. We're the county's workforce development arm, and what that means is we provide training and programs to fill the skills gap that exists within our workforce. A lot of times we'll hear from employers that they have open positions that they just can't fill because they don't find employees who have the right skill sets. So what we do is we look for employees who have some skills and then we'll put them through training to upgrade their skills a little bit so that they can fill those open positions and have great paying jobs that they can raise families on, buy houses, and help support our local economy. So it's a wonderful quality of life department, if you will. It is, and it's a win-win for everybody. So. That makes perfect <laughs> sense. Now, who are some of your program partners? We have a lot of program partners, but I'm probably going to not mention some of them, and they will be upset with us. But we um, work with the Kern High School District. We work with um, Bakersfield Adult School. We work with the Department of Human Services. We have a program for welfare to work, where we can bring people who are on public assistance in, get them some training, get them into a great paying job, and um, perhaps break that cycle. We have um, Kern Community College District as one of our partners. We have Cal State Bakersfield as one of our partners. We also work with vocational rehabilitation for folks who have disabilities or other things that are um, barriers to employment. Um, we also work with the Employment Development Department. That's one of our biggest partners because um, when someone loses their job, we go in to the employer, we give them all of the information about our programs. Hopefully we can place some of the employees immediately into other jobs. We do have a lot of partners throughout the community. So it takes a lot, it takes a village to make this happen. It does because you have a lot of, um, we also work with nonprofits and you have a lot of barriers to employment. A lot of folks don't have stable housing, they don't have um, stable transportation, so we work on those issues as well. We provide what are called supportive services, so we would help someone with transportation to and from work. We might help someone find um, affordable housing. So we put them in contact with other agencies that can fill some of those needs as well. So it's kind of a holistic approach to getting employees ready for the workforce. So describe to me some of the trainings that are available through ETR. We have a lot of different things, everything from cosmetology um, to truck driving to welding. Welding, we had a welding shortage for a while, so we worked with a number of schools in order to get the type of welding that our employers need. You know, who knew that welding has so many different types of welding out there? But that's another thing that we do is we um, work with the actual employers to find out what their actual needs are and then try to tailor the training programs to provide that. So welding, truck driving, Driving, a lot in the medical fields, medical assisting, um, certified nursing, licensed vocational nursing, registered nursing, and there's just so many different programs. Oh, all your office um, 
types of employment, um, bookkeeping, all of those types of trainings are available as well. Um, pharmacy techs, gosh, there's, if you can think of it, we probably have a training program available to train it. <laughs> wow, wow, impressive. Now, veterans, unemployed veterans are one of your priorities. How are you connecting with the vets and making it um, the job market available to them? They are a target group for us, and so we work very closely with Veteran Services, and um, Dick Taylor at Veteran Services is fantastic. He really has a passion and a heart for our veterans. Mm -hmm. So he works very closely with us, and we are um, putting folks um, actually in the Veterans Building to help assist with different um, resume and those types of things to work with the veterans to get them up to speed so that they can go out and find a job immediately. Uh, we are also looking at pulling um, we're trying to get access that um, veterans, when they're released, there's a list of veterans returning to your community. We're trying to get access to that so that we can contact them immediately and let them know that our services are available and help connect them. And then, of course, the Kern Patriot Partnership is a fabulous tool with the website and employers really um, jumping in there to try to fill those needs for veterans as well. Now, I've come to understand that potential employees are sometimes missing some of the essential hard skills <laughs> and soft skills. Describe what each of those are and how you're addressing those gaps. A hard skill is um, like welding or reading a tape measure or doing basic math. Those are things that are trainable. We have training programs for those. Um, computer skills, Microsoft Office, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel. Those are all hard skills that we can train someone and give them those skills. Some of the other skills that, you know, is a little bit surprising for some of us, but you know, there are folks out there who don't know how to resolve a conflict with their employer. They don't know um, that they need to be on time every day. They don't know necessarily what appropriate work attire would be for whatever work setting they're going into because let's face it not all work settings have the same requirements for what you would wear to work so we try to help people navigate those um, more the soft skills, the things that are just um, not necessarily what you're doing every day for work but they make a difference in whether or not you can be successful at work. That makes perfect sense. So has this integrative approach to job force development worked? It does work. It's fantastic, actually. And our performance metrics, I don't think people realize, but we have a requirement that we, once we have someone in our system and we've registered them, we have to have an 80% placement and retention rate. So when people come into our program, it's, um, not, it's very likely that they are going to get employed and stay employed and that they're going to be successful. And I think it is all of, all of the elements that we put into someone, that we are um, addressing their basic needs, we're addressing those soft skills, and we're giving them training so that they have an actual skill to go out and um, get the job that they want. Wow, I applaud your efforts. I applaud the efforts of everyone that has joined you and become a partner with the county. Anyway, Teresa, it, it just seems like everything is coming together and working beautifully for residents in Kern. It is, it's a fantastic opportunity for everybody at this point to work together and really address our residents' needs. Perfect, perfect, thank you. Thank you. So as you heard, education is part of the puzzle, part of the equation. Up next, we'll talk to Steve Sanders, and he's with Kern County Superintendent of Schools, and he's working on the job force market as well. Stay with us. Steve Sanders, Chief of Staff for Kern County Superintendent of Schools, has time and time again said that education is a willing partner to employment. You know, he is excited about the new projects and programs that KCSOS has to offer. Hi, Steve. Hi, Mary Beth. How are you? Excellent. Perfect. So, describe some of the programs that, that Kern County Superintendent of Schools has been involved with. You know, education has a long history of involvement with workforce development, which is what we're talking about. Getting kids at whatever age or adults into the workforce. 
um, which helps our economy and so forth. So obviously there's been a focus on that at all levels from education to high school. KCSOS has been involved in terms of one, supporting our districts in their efforts to do that, trying to connect business with schools at all different levels because that partnership between education and the private sector is really key to getting people employed. Um, just some examples that I can give you in terms of uh, workforce development efforts. For instance, in the Arvin High School, uh, there's been a long-standing partnership with their auto program and Jim Burke Ford, where students are going directly out of that program into employment and rising through the ranks. Um, Lightspeed Net, for example, has partnered with the high school district to get kids interested in computers interning at their business and then they hire them. So that's critical. Over the next several years, there's a big focus on STEM jobs, obviously which impact our county. The governor has put a lot of money into career technical education uh, just this year. So there's actually a grant out as we speak that districts will be applying for to get kids ready to go either from high school into college and career or directly from high school into career. So there's a lot happening. So you mentioned STEM. What is STEM? STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. And so it's really a partnership with our local industries in Kern County, energy industry, logistics. All of those require science, technology, engineering, and math. So there's a lot of efforts with groups like KEDC, the County of Kern, um, Supervisor Letitia Perez and Councilman Ken Weir have this county city task force that's really looking at what are the growth indus industries in Kern County and how do we make sure that the educators are tied into that so we're producing kids that can move from their high school or college directly into those jobs. So in terms of job sectors, as educators, you really are on top of those sectors and that, that matters to you and you plan, you use that as a, as a tool, if you will. Absolutely, and you're even seeing them taking a step further. Now you're seeing the um, high school district, the Kern Community College District, Taft College, so that post-secondary education, Cal State, really working together on articulation. So how do we seamlessly move kids through classes so that they're not wasting time in an area that, that you know, is not going to benefit them in the future or doesn't meet their interests? If they have an interest in engineering, how do we streamline that so that they get into the classes they need, start to get internships with employers, and become employable. You know, some residents still lack some of those very critical hard skills. Mm -hmm. um, and it puts them at a disadvantage, if you will, in the job force. How do you address that? Well, I think the first way you address it is you start early. And so getting to kids, even in preschool, um, I operate a program called Ready to Start that's a partnership with ERA Energy, the private sector, First Five to really target kids that haven't had preschool before they get into kindergarten. Because once they enter kindergarten, we want them able to learn. We don't want to see that gap grow. And so the whole goal is make sure they're reading by third grade at the third grade level. Once you can do that, and if you can get to them early, then their later academic years become easier in terms of making sure they're focused on the things that they need to learn. Um, and I think it's a focus, you know, employers do say we need kids and employees that come out that can read and know how to work together as a team. And so it's a combination of those hard skills, but also the soft skills that make people employable. You bet. You bet. Now, some of your partners, describe who they are in some of those programs. We're in a lucky situation that we get to partner with everybody. So we work with all the school districts from elementary, you know, K-8 through middle school. The high school district's a tremendous partner. Uh, community colleges, Cal State, and the private colleges, and then also employers. We have long-standing relationships with a lot of employers. Uh, Chevron is an example um, that does a whole host of programs here at the Superintendent of Schools all about preparing kids for the workforce. Another example might be the high school district in Fraser Park partnering with the U.S. Forest Service in their fire academy. So kids are coming out, they're getting that training, and directly out of high school, they're employed by the Forest Service fighting fires um, and, you know, helping out in ways in careers that interest them. 
you know, vocational uh, education is really critical. And some of those middle jobs are really terrific jobs with good pay and enable you to raise a family on it. Yeah. Are, are you a part of that? Absolutely. I mean, all of these industries that, that we're looking at, it can be anything from welding, which is a huge uh, you know, need in this community, but even our logistics, our farming, some of those industries that we don't think of as technological jobs have become that way. And you know, the use of computers, being able to read blueprints and things like that. So it's, it's really understanding what is the job of today and in the future need, and then being able at the local level to adjust to be able to give kids and adults the training they need to move forward. So the jobs of the future need to be prepared for today. Absolutely, and that's part of the conversation, I think, with all of these collaborative groups, is that you know, we can focus on today, but the pace of change is so, quickly, it's so quick now and um, you know jobs come and go and industries come and go and so I think what's nice is that part of the conversation is not only what do we need to do today but where is it going into the future and how do we best prepare for that. Well it's clear to me that as you've said education is a willing partner because that's what you're preparing people to do all day long. Yeah, we know we can't do it alone and we don't want to do it alone. When you do it in a vacuum, you don't meet the needs of your community. And all of this is about workforce development, getting kids and adults working, because at the end of the day, when you have a job, you can contribute to your family, to your community, and that's how we're going to get Kern County to grow. Absolutely. Thank you yeah. for your time, Thank Steve. Thank you. Appreciate it. Dick Taylor is the director of Kern County's Veterans Service Department. Dick has been instrumental in the development and implementation of a program called the Kern Patriot Partnership, or KPP. Developed in tandem with Chevron, KPP is connecting veterans to jobs. In Dick's own words, first you thank a veteran and then you hire one. Dick, describe to me, if you would, how KPP came about. Years ago in the private sector, when we were looking to hire uh, veterans ourselves, mm -hmm. we thought the process was just too bureaucratic, and we thought it wasn't uh, that hard to be able to connect veterans looking for gainful employment with employers willing to give veterans a first look. So what is KPP's mission? KPP's mission is simply to take top shelf employers that are willing to give our veterans a first look when they're looking to hire with veterans that are seeking uh, opportunities for careers and employment with top shelf companies. So who are some of your partners in the partnership? We have a growing list, but currently it's Chevron, Era Energy, Tahone Ranch, Kaiser Permanente, Sturgeon and Sons, and we have several others including West Star Trucking, uh, that uh, and there's the list goes on and on it, and it's growing every week. We have people that are, are absolutely thrilled to get on board and they're excited about the principle. So Chevron is a major partner in this program. Tell me about Chevron and, and why they're involved. Chevron liked the idea when we first brought it out and asked us to explain it a little bit further. And once they heard the concept and its relative simplicity, they uh, wanted to partner with us and so now this is a partnership that has really flourished and um, they are very supportive they bring a lot to the table their employees are supportive their their uh, command structure is supportive of us and they like this because it is this one other opportunity for chevron to give back to our community and to support our veterans now tell me about some of your events some of your services some of your programs We've attended several job fairs and business expos for both the uh, Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce, the Kern County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, as well as job fairs put on by Employers Training Resource. And we also offer training for uh, veterans on an individualized basis to help them get their resumes in order and to help them hone in on their uh, interview skills. So I am an employer interested in hiring a veteran. What should my strategy be so that I make sure I find the right man or woman for the right job? 
being an employer myself previously, and we hire people here in our office, mm -hmm. it's important that hiring a veteran has buy-in from the top on down, all the way down to the hiring managers and staff. So uh, when a business is looking to hire a veteran, they need to look at the talent acquisition as part of the whole strategy. Now, they're not just hiring as a charity to a veteran, but they are looking to hire somebody that's top-notch and the best fit for the job. So it's important, I think, also to familiarize themselves with veterans' issues, and they can be done just kind of looking in to see what veterans are looking for when they get out of the service. They want to go to work and they want to be productive members of society again. How do I get involved? How do I get my business signed up to be a part of your program? That is super simple. All they need to do is go on to our website at currentpatriot.org, sign up as an employer, and a member of our staff will be in contact with them and uh, chat with them as far as what their strategy is, what they're looking for, how they want to uh, be contacted by potential employees, and exactly how if they want their um, for instance, if they want their logo put on our website, those types of things. So are there certain jobs that veterans are uniquely qualified for? The, the skills and jobs that our clients bring to the table run the whole gamut, everything from nurses to welders and everything in between. And some of the collateral duties that those veterans perform when they were in the military prepare them uniquely for jobs, and that's things like showing up to work on time, working with a diverse group of people, ready to hit the ground running. They, are, they get along good with people, and they're used to working under deadlines, tight deadlines sometimes, where there's a lot of pressure and with minimal supervision. Now, do you have success stories? We have some great success stories, and uh, one particular one that comes to mind is Jared Jones. Jared Jones uh, served honorably in the U.S. Coast Guard, and he's a single dad and looking for a job that offered him some flexibility, and he's very talented in terms of managerial uh, abilities, and he works for a, um, a company called Sodexo, and they run the, the a full range of things in the healthcare field, and that's, what, and that's what he loves to do, and he absolutely loves his job. So, in a nutshell, is the partnership working? Oh, it's been very successful, and uh, matter of fact, in the first week before we even really launched the program, Within uh, just a few days, we had over seven veterans uh, hired. I mean, just, just like that. Yeah. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. So it's clear the Kern Patriot Partnership is working, and Jared Jones is proof positive of that. We will hear his story next. The Current Patriot Partnership is working, and Jared Jones is proof positive of that. We'll talk to him now. Jared, tell me, when, where, and in what branch of the military did you serve? I served from 2002, I went in fresh 2002, straight out of high school, and I served until 2011 in the United States Coast Guard. Um, and I served primarily in Northern California, and anywhere from Oakland, Alameda, San Francisco, back up to Petaluma, and back to Petaluma again. Now, upon discharge, what was your initial experience in getting back into the workforce? Honestly, it's tough. Uh, there's a lot to take in. You have to learn that transition is so much what you're used to, especially when you're in for that long and you're accustomed to something and it's, it's just not the same. So it, it's very tough and any help that you can get is definitely appreciated. So how did the program help? Did, uh, was there training? Was there contacts? Job? Job preparation? For me, it was mainly um, the, the contacts and networking. They, they put me into some positions with some people and, and just helped me network. And then uh, it, for me, it unfolded into something better. I ended up finding work with a company where, you know, in my role, I needed employees. So I was able to come back to KPP and, and I just hired another guy through KPP as well. So it's helped me in more than one way. <laughs> so Dick, does that happen very frequently where, where a veteran gets a job and then he becomes someone in the HR position to hire another veteran? Mary Beth, we've had that happen several times and it's contagious because a veteran gets in uh, a position where they are in a, a spot where they're in HR, human resources, and they know what they're looking for because they're looking to hire fellow veterans and now we have this great connection and we can contact that person within their HR division and 
and provide them with some wonderful, wonderful candidates. So what did you like most about the program? Really that it's directed towards veterans. I mean, it's, it's almost like kind of having a, taps, but on a civilian side. It helps you transition into finding work, networking, getting staff, and it's gonna help people that don't know how to really write a resume and, and transition military nomenclature to civilian. Um, just every, there's so many different parts of it that help, and, and, and that's awesome, you know, and it's helping our community. In Kern County, I've come to find out that, you know, the support to veterans is great, and, and this is just another piece of it now. So what would you say to a veteran, fellow veterans, mm -hmm. from all branches who are struggling to find work? Definitely at least stop by, see how they can help you. I mean, some people need help with resumes, some don't. Some people need help with interviews, some don't. Some people just need that extra networking, you know, and why would you turn down a good thing? It's, it's free, you come in as a veteran, you're getting assistance to, to, to get help. And I don't know why anyone would want to turn that down. <laughs> so from the program facilitator perspective, how does a vet get engaged and involved? A couple of different ways. Uh, uh, and it's fun to listen to Jared and how he uh, interacted with other organizations in town and how he networked. But they can either come into our office here at 1120 Golden State Avenue, uh, right near M and N uh, in East Bakersfield, or they can come um, to our website, go to kernpatriot.org, fill out the online form uh, on who they are and what some of their basic skills are, and that comes to us, and then we will contact them and start the process and see if they need assistance with resume building or interview skills or finding job leads or whatever. So Jared, has KPP made a difference in your life? tremendously and in a short period of time and you know it's it's crazy the first time I came over here was maybe a month or two ago and within that short period of time I've I've spread the word I've helped KPP grow because I believe in it and I believe in helping our our community and our veterans um, and on top of that it, it's helped that you know I'm fully staffed now where I worked and I was short staffed so and I get to bring in my fellow veterans so I'm, that's awesome okay thank you so very much for your time and your service of course Henry Ford was spot on when he said, working together is success. And in Kern County, the value of public-private partnerships is evident as government and business work together to put people to work. Recently, Bakersfield was named the 11th best city in the United States for veterans. Now that's something we can all be proud of. Thank you for joining me on this edition of Inside Kern, the program that seeks to demystify county programs, services, and projects. Now we hope you learn something about the trainings available to you, or perhaps someone you know. It might just make a difference. So on behalf of myself, Mary Beth Garrison, and the entire KGov team, we wish you a very pleasant day, and we ask that you first thank a veteran, and then you hire one.